Attributes? Yes, when you give a thing, an object, right? Human-like attributes or qualities, right? So, we have the stars winked at me, right? We're personifying the stars. The stars can't actually wink, right? But we can say they can wink, right? That twinkling idea. So I want you to look in, everyone look in your packet from your sample sentence that you wrote. Okay, um, the, the front of the blue sheet, I think, is it? Purple sheet, purple half sheet, okay. Um, I want to hear some examples. Let's refresh our minds of personification. Malia? The train marched up the hill. The train marched up the hill, right? The train doesn't actually have feet to march, right? But we get it, it's like slowly chugging, like, I'm going to make it. Okay, Jessica, what's your personification? The moonlight reached down on the earth. Oh, that's really pretty. The moonlight reached down on the earth, right? We can almost see those moonbeams lighting up someone's romantic midnight stroll. Lovely. Okay, very nice. Um, then we had onomatopoeia. What's onomatopoeia? Oliver. Uh, uh, sorry, Oliver Orchard. Oh, isn't it uh, using um, uh, sounds? How? Or, Helps with visualization, right? We're using sound. How other over? Uh, uh, word that imitates the sound. Yes, right? It's imitating that sound, right? Words that imitate sound. So look in your packets again. What are some examples of onomatopoeia? Sophie? The tears dripped down on her cheeks. The tears dripped, dripped down on her cheeks. Very nice. What's another example of onomatopoeia? What's that? What did you get? The popcorn made a lot of pop when it was ready. Excellent, right? We all know that delicious popcorn popping sound, right? Uh, ben? Here's the distant pop. Here's the pop of the distant rifle. A second later, is hitting the face of shadow. Oh my gosh, okay, getting a little graphic with that one. He heard the distant pop of a rifle, right? Okay, yeah, we all know that sound too, especially around these parts, okay? Very nice. Um, okay, and then paraphrases are kind of trickier one. Paraphrases, Sophie. Using a creative and descriptive phrase in place of a simple noun. Using a creative and descriptive phrase in place of a simple noun. Yeah, poets love paraphrases, and so should you. Um, examples of paraphrases. Carmen, what was your paraphrases example? Oh, this is on the front of your blue sheet, on the bottom of your blue sheet. Oh, Carmen, we didn't, didn't quite get one. Joe, did you get one? No. It would be here. Let's give it a listen. Oliver. A couple of words. 
Yeah, like a couple of words grouped together, right? It could be a whole line of your poem that's being repeated. Maybe it could just one word, right? A couple of words. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example from Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, okay, a very famous poem. Um, it wasn't on our walk because it's super long, but one person did choose to, to do it because that was her favorite poem, that's fine. Okay, um, but The Raven, go ahead, two more. Uh, the Raven is about this man who's, in case you don't know what it's about, it's about this man who is at home all alone at night on a stormy dark night, and, and he's kind of, freaking himself out a little bit. He's hearing, he's in this big mansion by himself, kind of hearing these noises. Okay, so I'm going to read you a couple of lines from each stanza. And as I'm reading it to you, I want you to think about these underlined work, these underlined phrases. Okay, why is this what, cho what Poe chose to underline? What is it letting us know about our narrator who's telling us this story? Right, and what feelings is it giving you? Okay. To still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This is it, and nothing more. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door." That I scarce was sure I heard you, here I opened wide the door, darkness there and nothing more. And the only word spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Why is nothing more being repeated? Malia, what do you think? Because he's sort of like paranoid, the narrator, and oftentimes yeah, relate. Raise your hand if you can relate to this idea of, of maybe being home alone one time and you kind of heard creepy sounds around the house and you're like, oh, it was just the wind. It, it was just the dog, right? It was just the door, the floorboard creaking, right? Yeah, we can all kind of relate to that feeling of feeling a little paranoid, right? So yeah, he's kind of used these repeating lines to show. Right, that our, our main character is a little freaked out. Okay, our narrator is a little scared. Very nice. So why do you think an author in general just uses repetition? What, how does that help their writing? How does that help their poem? How does it help how we understand what's happening? Um, it might help get like, a point across. Yeah, it might help get that main idea across, right? If something is worth saying twice, it must be important, right? And he says it like a million times in his book. Okay, and that's hyperbole. Uh, Sophie. Because like you always tell us how it gets back to repetition, and like if it's repeated in a poem or a book, that must mean that it's important. Right, yeah, if it's repeated in a poem or a book, that idea, whatever's being repeated, must be important. So what does Poe think is important for us to know about that poem that we just read, those excerpts? What do we need to know about the narrator, Sterling? That he thinks there's something else in the house. Does he actually think there's nothing else in the house, though? No, he's trying to trick himself, right? Yeah, excellent, nice work with that. Okay. All right, alliteration. This is our new, this is a new one for sure. Alliteration. Henry, what do you think alliteration may mean? A sentence that starts with the same letter, right? And what's happening with that letter that it starts with, or letter that's in it? Elijah? It's in almost every single word, right? It's being repeated a lot. Okay? So alliteration is the use of the same beginning sound uh, or letter in a line or verse. So an example of this, you're not going to write this one down. You're going to come up with your own example. Okay. Susie saw seals down by the sea. So cute. Okay, Susie saw seals down by the sea. What's being repeated? The S. Is it in every word of the sentence? Is that okay? Yeah, right? Because that S is there enough to let us know that that's obviously the letter and the sound that's being repeated. Okay? So, for your practice for alliteration, I am going to have Sophie and Elliot come around and they're going to give you a Bananagrams title. Okay? You don't get to pick, you don't get to dig through the cups.
okay? You pick and they walk away. All right, it's happening real quick. So ladies, come on up. And whatever letter you draw is your uh, alliteration letter that you are writing a sentence about, okay? I, I picked out some of the harder ones. I took out the X's and Z's and stuff like that. Yeah, okay? So quick, quick. That's an I, the L will have the under, they're all capitalized letters. So as soon as you get that tile, start thinking of all the words that you know that begin with that letter that you just that you just got. You can maybe make a little brainstorming list off to the side of your paper. That's fine. Okay. Think of all the letters that you know, or all the words that you know that begin with that letter. Okay. And then I, you're gonna get just a second, a couple minutes. Okay. To fill that in, I'll have a share with the partner.
same sound, right? Same sound being repeated, okay? But not just any sound, the vowel sound in a sentence. The vowel sound in a sentence. What are our vowels? A-E-I-O-U, right? Sometimes one. A-I-O-U, and sometimes one. Okay, so an example, if you're not going to write this one down, you'll come up with your own example. Okay. We sat beneath the tree. What, what sound's being repeated? E. The E, right? But if the E is being repeated, then why isn't this one underlined? That's not the same sound. Because it's not repeated. Elsa, why is that being repeated? Because the hands are like hard E's, like E and then the E and the is a soft E. Yeah, okay, so the, the other E's are being used. Elsa is kind of saying they're like a hard E, right? They're kind of like that E, right? They're a little longer, right? But this, this E, the, is kind of like that uh sound, e, sounding E, right? So it needs to be that same vowel sound being repeated throughout, right? Not just all the vowels, okay? But that same one being repeated. So how you are going to practice, okay? You're going to have three sentences up here, okay? I'm going to give you three sentences to work with. And you're going to put a box around the repeated vowel sound in each sentence. Okay, you're going to write the sentence completely out and then box those vowel sounds in the sentence. So our first sentence, we ate apples and drank from the spring. We ate apples and drank from the spring. Our second sentence, my mother sighed as I climbed too high. What was the strange sentence? Third sentence. I woke up and my hair was truly unruly. Picking one sentence, writing it out, and boxing the, the repeated vowel sound. We ate apples and drank from the spring. Sounds like a nice afternoon. My mother sighed as I climbed too high. I woke up and my hair was truly unruly. and drank from the spring. Okay, who chose, raise your hand if you chose we ate apples and drank from the spring. Very nice, Sterling, what did you come up with? What, what vowel sounds being repeated? The A. The A, okay, so what vowels in each sentence should we put a box around? We ate. Ate. Apples. Apples. Yeah. And. And. Drank. Drank. Anything else? No, right? Last class someone was like, oh, I don't know if I pronounce apples that way. Okay, so sometimes we repeat our vowels, we say our vowels a little differently depending on our dialect, right? So this one I would, you know, I would accept if maybe you thought, eh, I don't know if apples counts because it's kind of like that ah, uh, right, rather than the a, we ate apples, right? Maybe, so maybe, maybe it isn't this one, right? A, but the and. Okay. But it's still kind of that soft A, right? My mother sighed as I climbed too high. Who did this one? Very nice. Caleb, what vowels should I be underlining? My. My? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, we'll talk about that in a second. Nice catch, Caleb. Okay, what's the next one? Side. Side. I. As I. Climb. Climb. High. Okay, as I climb too high. Why is the why? This is not an I. Why does this get a box, Oliver? But it sounds like an I, right? That's why sometimes it's Y. That's why apple doesn't work. Because it sounds like you can't pronounce it. 
Yeah, right? We don't say apples, right? So this one, right, might not, at first read, right, it seems like it does, but maybe once you're actually really saying that word as an individual, does it really qualify? Okay, so nice catch with that, Caleb. Good work. Okay, number three. I woke up and my hair was truly unruly. Who did this sentence? Raise your hand. Joe Mack. What ones do we put a box around? Does everyone agree that that's all you should have? Yes, right? That's all you should have. Why doesn't this get a, get a box? Why doesn't that you get a box? Different sounds like uh rather than truly. Uh, well, uh, oh yeah, truly, right? Unruly, right? Well, you, you would say I woke up. Yeah, maybe if you change the usage. Okay. All right, very nice. Um give me just a second while we'll I erase this. Oh, did did some of these rhyme? Did you think that some of these rhymed? Yeah, right? If, right, truly and really definitely had an end rhyme, right? Bonus, okay, what is it called if you have, right, sighed and climbed? They don't come at the end like if this was a poem. It doesn't come like here and here, right, which is normally how we look for rhyme, right, on the end. What do you think we call it if we look for a rhyme on the inside of a sentence? Mm, irregular is a good guess. We call this an internal rhyme, right? Because it's inside the sentence. Okay, so kind of a little bonus idea there. So I want you to look at that box of words. Or sorry, not the box of words, but the list of words at the bottom of that salmon sheet. Okay, you've got some options there. Also, if we'll take it to the next slide. Okay, so thinking of both alliteration and assonance, okay, why do you think of those options there? You know, when we said those sentences out loud, what works best? Why do you think a writer uses, allit uses alliteration or assonance as, as repetition, right? My mother sighed as I climbed too high. Does that have a nice, smooth flow to it, or is it kind of like choppy and sort of hurts your ears a little bit? It's really smooth and nice to hear, right? Um, does it have a little of that internal rhyme going on that we talked about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? But does it also have the end rhyme sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, like the truly unruly, okay? So take a second. I want you to do check mark. I want you to circle. What ones do you think? Why does an author use this kind of repetition? does. Why does an author use this type of repetition? Elijah, what's one thing that you circled? Um, smooth, reading. smooth reading, right? Makes it just nicer to read, like, even in your head, and really nice to read out loud, okay? Poetry is often meant to be read out loud, so poets want it to sound nice and smooth and easy to say. Sterling, what did you circle? Oh, uh, throw off the reader. Yeah, just to make it like unique and different. Okay, so maybe if you're thinking throwing off the reader as in making it unique and different with that particular sound, right? But is the reader really trying to like confuse you by throwing you off? No, right? So I don't know if we, maybe we should circle throw off, right? Because the reader doesn't want to confuse you, right? They want you to keep you right in that nice balance of reading, right? Elliot. Uh, I yeah, better flow and sound. I agree, right? The I climb too high. That really does have a nice flow and sound to it. Oliver? I uh, struggle into a rhyme because you know how uh, they're using like the same letters. Usually when they have the same letters, they rhyme. Yeah, they kind of create that rhyme, right? And that rhyme is that kind of fun to read, right? And helps. And right? it also kind of makes it kind of smooth as well, I think. Contributes to the smoothness. Very nice. Yeah, I think those are your, your full three that you should have circled. Very nice. Okay, so um, I'm going to just show you now, excellent job listening, excellent job with sam sample sentences. If you turn to the other side of that salmon sheet, that is where you begin practicing um, finding these different types of repetition in your poem. Okay, so if you take a look at that salmon sheet, let me get this switched over for us. Okay, so you've got all these circles, 
right? What's going on with going circles? Okay, so you're going to use your poem to try and find examples of these repetition, rep different forms of repetition happening. Okay, so your first one that you're looking at is just regular repetition, right, of phrases or words. Okay, and when you get to your poem, right, when you're reading your poem and you find it, your, your code for annotating is you're just double underlining. Why do you think I asked you to underline it twice? Because it's repetition, right? You're just repeating the line. Okay. So, what's being repeated? Okay, so when I read my poem, my poem didn't have a lot of repetition. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah right? Maybe your author just didn't choose to include repetition. That's fine. Um, but I did find a little bit of repetition. And I feel like my most important one I found was, you know, he talks about setting the forest on fire, but hour by hour they fell and faded. Okay, so what's being repeated? I'm literally writing down hour by hour, right? Literally writing down the exact words from the poem, okay? So what does it mean when someone's like, oh, right, it went hour by hour, day by day, right? Are they saying that time went by quickly or slowly? Slowly. Slowly, right? So that brings me to my next bubble. What does, what does the repetition mean, right? What's the author actually trying to say, right? Well, he's just trying to let me know that time in this dark earth that he's living on goes by super slowly. Okay, so I just wrote that down. Time goes by slowly. Okay, why it's being repeated. Why did we talk about the, why do authors choose to repeat things? Sophie? It means, it means it's important, right? And so I have to, you know, figure out why this is important, right? Well, Lord Byron thinks it's, it's important to repeat this, right? Because he wants us to let, he wants to let the reader know that time in this place goes by super slowly, right? It's not a very fun and exciting place where you're like, whoa, that day went by quickly. It's pretty, like, miserable all day. <laughs> okay, Elsa? I have a question about the repetition. Could it be something, like, not, like, necessarily that's repeated, like, over and over, like, like, still arise, still arise, still arise, like, in, uh, still arise? <laughs> but, um, yeah. Like, something that brings up, like, different facts, like, with it, at the poem, like, throughout the poem? Right, yeah, I would say that any repeated theme or idea, right, any idea that they keep on hinting, right, right, I could even just argue that darkness, right, is a repeated idea of my poem, right, because he always talks about just how dark it is, right, so you could include something like that, that's totally fine. Jessica? Um, so there's a lot of, like, rhyming, so like, repeating the same sound, but, like, in the stanzas, so, like, the second line is, like, with your bitter twisted lives, and then the last is... Um, the last line is, but still I rise, so that rhymes. Okay. That be well, that's, right, are we looking for rhyme or are we looking for repetition or alliteration? Right. So, um, focusing on, right, is this just a rhyme or is there actually repetition with this alliteration or with this assonance that's happening? Okay, so that's really what you're looking for. So it might require you to do some reading of your, of your poem, your lines of your poem out loud so that you can really listen for those sounds that are actually being repeated, right? And then why are they being repeated? So let's say I go along and, and I find repetition, right? Um, and that's great, cool. I'm ready to move on to alliteration. Uh, but maybe I do not find any alliteration in my poem. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, so what should I do with these? Just X them out. Just use X them out, leave them blank, move on. Right? That's fine. And then assonance. Double underline it in your poem. Same idea. Okay? Uh, what vowel sound is being repeated? Okay? Maybe I found a sentence that has that long E sound again and I would put that. Right? What is it adding to the poem? Right? Maybe it's adding this like feeling of time being slowed down. Those long days that are happening in this dark earth. Right? So you have until the bell rings. Okay? And then throughout the weekend to read your poem. Look through Try and find this re these different forms of repetition. How are you annotating it on your poem? Double underline. Double underline. Very nice. Okay. And then answering right these bubbles about it. Okay. Um, we can begin. I'll come around for one-on-one -on -one check ins and see how I'm doing with that. Are you doing trigger uh, packet checks? Uh, we don't have enough packet time for packet checks since we are on advisory schedule. So you guys got lucky. Packets will be checked on Monday, okay? Including the orange sheet and this, okay? So, um, if you've got it done and you're ready, right on. You don't have that much weekend homework. Besides your 
Okay, go ahead and get started. I'll come around for questions.